Hey, it's your home slice, Fung, aka Leopard Crust, and today we're gonna be making some home slices using a conventional oven as well as our rock box. This is a beginner friendly video where I'm gonna share some tips and tricks so that your first pizza is better than my first pizza. Let's start by making our dough. So today we're using the simple dough recipe on gosney.com. I'm going to make a half portion and all you have to do for that is to half everything. The water, flour, salt and yeast. For my first trick, I'm going to show you how you can have your kneading time from 10 minutes as the recipe says and get the exact same results. So we're going to start with water. I've got 295 grams in here. So basically you just want to use the amount of water that the recipe calls for, but just save five grams. And then to that, I'm gonna add 500 grams of flour. The trick is auto lease. And that's just a fancy way of saying that we're going to soak our flour and let it hydrate. And that is how we're gonna have our kneading time. It's that simple. So this is 500 grams of flour. All you have to do now is get amongst it. We're just gonna make sure that the water reaches all the flour and then set that aside for 30 minutes to an hour. And basically we're letting time do the work for us. You'll notice that this recipe is a 60% hydration dough, which means it'll be super easy to handle. Perfect if this is your first pizza or if you're new to making pizza. So yeah, all you're doing is kind of squishing your flour into the middle of that dough mass because that's where all the water hides. And this will take us about two minutes, maybe one if you're faster than me. <laughs> so this is our auto lease. We're gonna cover this with a damp tea towel and just leave it for 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much time you have. And yeah, it's as simple as that. <laughs> All right, so this is how our auto lease is looking after an hour. You can actually see that the flour has absorbed the water, which is great. That's exactly what we want. And now it's time to add our yeast. So this is 0.5 grams of instant yeast. The challenge with measuring small amounts of yeast is that sometimes some scales have difficulty picking up such trace amounts. So if you want any visual cues, it's about half of a quarter of a teaspoon. Now we're gonna add that remaining five grams of water that we did not include in our autolyse, so that's why we omitted five grams earlier, so we can hydrate our yeast. And giving that a little stir of my finger just to dissolve the yeast in the water. And then we're gonna add that to our dough. And as the recipe says, we're going to give that 30 seconds of a mix. So we just want to make sure our yeast is nice and tucked into our dough. Now we're going to add our salt. I've got 15 grams of salt here. So in the beginning when I was starting out, I always wondered, why do you have to add the salt at the end? There's two reasons. A lot of people get worried about adding yeast and salt at the same time because they worry that the salt will inhibit the growth of the yeast, which is true. So salt does actually slow down fermentation. But to me, the bigger impact is that if you add salt too early, salt also strengthens the gluten network, which is what we want. We really love that about salt. But <laughs> if you add it too early, you may end up with a very rubbery final dough, which is not great to eat. And so adding the salt at the end definitely helps with making sure that you don't end up with a rubbery disc of dough. Once that's come together, we can move it to the counter. And you can see that with this auto lease method, the dough is pretty much ready to go with just two minutes of kneading. So we're gonna give it a quick knead. And basically what you're looking for when you're kneading your dough is for a nice smooth surface to develop because that's how you know that your gluten network is good to go. Look at that, nice smooth surface. This is the auto lease method. It's a great option if you wanna let time do the work for you and you've got an extra 30 minutes to an hour, that's all it takes to make a difference. 
How are you doing over there? Not all of these parallel universe ones. Yeah, good, thanks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let us know when you're done. So we're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. Uh, back to regular programming as the recipe says. And uh, yeah, let's just wait for her to be done. All right, I'm done. Let's uh, play some side by side, see if people can tell the difference. Okay. So it's been 10 minutes. Our dough's had a chance to rest on the counter. And now, as the recipe says, it is time to work on the surface tension of our dough. So that surface tension is basically just a sign of your dough's gluten strength. So we build the gluten strength of your dough by dragging it along the counter just like this. So it becomes nice and smooth. So now we're gonna let this rest for 45 minutes and then it's time to make dough balls. So it's been 45 minutes and our dough is looking ready for balling. If you're a bit scared of sticky dough, all you have to do is wet your hands and the dough won't stick to your hands at all. So you don't have anything to worry about. So with our home oven pizza, we're gonna be using the cast iron method and I'm gonna show you how to do that later. But depending on the size of your cast iron, it's not gonna be as big as pizza you can make in the rock box. So I recommend going with a 220 gram dough ball. So let's get 220 grams of dough out of the bowl. Is it this much? Let's see. Pretty good, <laughs> 224, let's go with that. 214. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a little bit off of this one and we're gonna split the difference. So now we've got two 220 gram dough balls. And then for our rock box pizzas, 250 is great to make a 12 inch pizza if you've used zero zero flour. So if you have leftover dough, don't worry. I call this an insurance policy because if later uh, you happen to have a tear in your pizza, you can always use a little bit of this dough ball as a band-aid. <laughs> so it's good to keep around. And then if you don't end up using that insurance, you can just bake it off into a cute little tiny bun. Now that we've divided our dough, let's ball them up. My way of doing it is just kind of on the counter, folding it against itself and then you can just use your hands to seal the bottom by using two hands to twist the bottom so you get a nice seal. And then last but not least, our rock box dough. And now I'm just gonna put them into a box so that they can proof. Just make sure that there's a little bit of space between the dough balls so that they don't stick together more than they need to. There's our tray of dough. The recipe says to allow these to proof for eight hours at 18 degrees Celsius. If your room temperature is higher than that, it's gonna be faster, so it's about six hours. And then if you live in a colder climate, it's gonna take longer to proof. So just make sure you account that into your final proof time and you're gonna be rewarded with amazing pizza. So it's about 22 degrees Celsius here. That means it'll take about six hours for this to proof. So while you're waiting for these to proof, just make sure that you've covered them so that they don't form a skin. It's time to make pizza. Our dough has been final proofing. And how to tell if your dough is ready is, you'll notice that our dough balls are now double in size, and you can definitely see that they've also relaxed a bit, which is exactly what we want because that'll mean that they're ready to stretch. First, we're gonna make pizza using the conventional oven. For that, we're going to use the cast iron method. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the smaller 220 gram dough balls. So we've got our dough ball out. This is a bowl of semolina flour. I like using fine semolina flour. It's also called semolina rimacinata on the packet. When you take the dough out, you wanna place it upside down into the flour and then give it a flip so that you coat both sides. And you'll notice as soon as you start touching this dough that it's nice and friendly because of 
60% hydration. So you can sprinkle a little bit of flour onto your countertop and transfer your dough out. You want to make sure it's nice and round at this point because if it's any other shape, that is going to be the shape of your pizza. And then take your fingers and start from the center of the dough and just press downwards. We're not pushing down and away, just downwards. Using this downwards motion, move air from the middle of the dough ball to the edges. And that's how we get an airy crust. So we did that with one side where you just push down and move away from yourself towards the border of the dough ball and create a two centimeter or one inch border. And then you want to use your fingers to press out the sides of that to create an arch. Pick the dough ball out from that crust you've just made and you just flip that onto the counter. And we do the exact same thing, starting from the center, pressing downwards, and then moving in an arch. And look at that. We got a nice border in our dough ball. If you get some cute little <laughs> bubbles, you can just give that a, a flick to pop it, because those parts will burn in the oven. In my opinion, the easiest way to stretch pizza is to pick it up. I know it may seem a little bit intimidating, but don't worry, this dough is friendly. And then you're gonna use your knuckles to stretch out that base, just like this. You can just move your hands around so that you get different parts of your dough and you just stretch that out just like this. But if you wanna toss it, you can. <laughs> Once you've gotten to this step, you want to also preheat your pan. So I'm going to do that right now. While that's preheating, we're going to finish stretching out our dough. So we want this dough to be the size of this pan. The other method of stretching your dough is the DJ, where you use your fingers to stretch the crust. For this method, you want to make sure that there's flour on your counter because you don't want the dough to stick to the counter while you're trying to turn it and then tear a hole in it. So the reason why we preheat the pan is to mimic the hot stone of the rock box because the rock box gives you this awesome heat transfer from the bottom, cooking the bottom of your pizza really nicely. And this is the part where we transfer our dough to the pan. So how I like to do that is just take your hand, put it on one half of the pizza, and with your other hand, you flip the dough onto your hand and it forms this dough sandwich and you're the filling. And then you pick up your pizza and you lay that out onto the pan. And don't worry, you've got some time to adjust it so that it's nice and round. So you can already see that the crust is starting to cook and that's when you wanna add some sauce. Use the highest quality tomato sauce you can find. It makes a huge difference in the flavor of your pizza. And then I've got here some Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm gonna sprinkle across. I'm all about umami. And then we're going to put one slice of provolone. And then we're gonna scatter mozzarella across. So once you start putting the mozzarella on, that's a good time to reduce the heat on your stove so that you don't end up burning the bottom of your crust. So now I've got it at low medium heat. So that'll help the bottom of that pizza brown nice and evenly. Last but not least, we're gonna add our pepperoni. You can already see the crust starting to puff up, which is a really good sign that, that heat transfer from the bottom is happening. So I've just turned the heat up until I get the color I want on the bottom of that crust. Meanwhile, I've been preheating the conventional oven to the second highest heat setting that'll go, okay, great, we're starting to get some browning, so I'm gonna just give that one minute. To move on to the next step, you wanna turn your stove off and then with your preheated oven, make sure you've got a tray on the highest possible rack and slide your pizza in there. And then we're going to place our oven to broil. So that's going to mimic the awesome flame as closely as we can that the Rockbox has the time it'll take depends on how hot your oven will go. So as mentioned before, just keep checking it until you see the crust browning. Whoa, nice. All right, our pizzas had the time to brown nicely in the oven. 
All you have to do is take your spatula, dislodge the pizza from the pan, and transfer it to a plate so that it can cool. That took about seven minutes in the oven. It will vary depending on how hot your oven goes. There we have it. We've got our home oven pizza baked in a conventional oven. We got some pretty decent charring where the sauce hit the crust. So I think the natural sugars in the tomato sauce helped to achieve that. And then we've got a little bit of browning on the rest of the crust as well, which is great. So that's going to be nice, crispy and flavorful. Thanks to the broiler, we got some nice cupping and charring on our roni cups. I'm always a fan of that. Let's try it. And then that's a golden brown underside, which is what I like. Let's get in there. Not bad. So if this were my first pizza, I would be totally happy with that. This is way better than my first pizza. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> So now let's try making a pizza in the rock box using the same dough. I'm gonna get one of the 250 gram dough balls out for this one, because now we can make a larger pizza. We're gonna shoot for 12 inches, so we can share with more people. A camera crew? <laughs> so just cover the dough balls when you're not ready to use them so that they don't develop a skin at the top. Just like uh, what we did with the cast iron pan method. Got the dough ball in upside down. We're gonna give it a flip so that the flour coats both sides. Transfer it to the counter, dust the counter with a bit of flour and start to press out our crust. And now it's time to get our pizza onto the peel. The easiest way to get the pizza onto the peel is to grab it with one hand. With the hand under the pizza, you're gonna bring it towards you while you move the peel away from you. There we go, wasn't that easy? Once the pizza's on the peel, we can give it one last stretch. So in this step, you're kind of stretching the crust so that you've got a larger pizza. If your toppings have moved around uh, in those steps, you can just make sure that they're evenly distributed. There we have our pizza ready for the rock box. <laughs> Let's go. We're gonna go for a classic 60 second rock box bake. So, launching your pizza is all about that pulling out motion. I used to think it was actually about pushing the pizza into the oven, but I was wrong. <laughs> so, I'm just watching for the back of the crust to pop up, and once it does, that's when you know it's time to turn the pizza. With the rock box, you're basically cooking the top and the bottom at the same time. So be sure to watch the top of the crust, but also check that booty. Oh, that is a beautiful booty. So we want to make sure that all sides of the pizza get their time near the flame. There we go. Our finished pizza. Let's head back inside and eat this baby. So there's our 60 second rock box baked pepperoni pizza. You can see that the intense heat gives it this leoparding. So we got leopard spots on this one. And just a tip, if this is your first pizza, you don't have to make it 12 inches. A smaller pizza will be easier to launch and bake in the oven. So you've got options. Cool. So you can see that if you allow your dough to final proof properly, you can still get a beautiful airy crust, even with a 60% hydration dough. Cheers. <laughs> so the faster cook has given us leoparding on the base as well, which is amazing flavor. That kind of gives you this beautiful caramelized base underneath your delicious toppings. Let's try the crust. You know, I go by leopard crust, so obviously the crust is my favorite part. What I love about fast bakes is that you still have a lot of moisture within the crust, but you have a bit of crunch on the outer shell of that crust, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. I'm going to finish eating this with a little bit of something special. So uh, today, this was with Gosney's simple dough recipe. Check it out. Happy baking. and. 
Hope you get some great pizzas. <laughs> Cut.